Hello and welcome to Sports Opinion, the weekly sports talk show on Channel 18. <clears throat> My name's Dirk Keller. This is Bob Boyd. Good That's morning. Bud Supel. And this is Earl Murphy, the one and only. Earl the Pearl. <laughs> We're glad to have you back with us. Uh, you know, <clears throat> guys, I have to start the show today. By saying hello to my mother. Last week's show got <laughs> cut off early, and I got her to the TV both times to watch, and then she didn't get to hear us say hello or goodbye to her. So Let's say hello, hello Dorothy Keller. <laughs> Hi, Mom. She's been here in town helping me with the kids, and she's the best mom. That's great. Period. So thanks for being here. So you're not going to trade her in for another mom? Nope. <laughs> no, no. And she enjoys sports opinion. She thinks it's a pretty good, good show. Good. So I have to say I agree. <clears throat> a lot of women watch the show. Yeah, yeah. I hear about yeah, it. I think there's more women. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> well, it's because these four handsome guys oh, yeah. are out here. That must oh, be yeah. Right, yeah. all the yeah. sex appeal on this but show. But she enjoyed right. the football game out there, too. We're sexy oh, and we know it. Kind oh, of yeah. Well, my mom stayed up with me and my boy Friday night watching that Cardinals come for behind baseball yeah. game wow. to beat the yeah. Washington Nationals and none of us could believe it but she's a big sports fan I mean my dad was a coach so she's used sure. to being at sporting events and um, and then Saturday morning you know we get up and turn on the Hawkeye game oh, and boy. Mm -hmm. it was looking pretty much like the Cardinal game started you know just not very exciting not very good it started off with a touchdown yeah. well for the other guys not good but you know what that's one of the best defenses I've seen from Iowa in a long time. Is that right? Both passing and running. Mm -hmm. Defense has done a very good oh, job. They've they improved every course. game. That's and that right. was the difference in the game. That's right. Clearly. That's right. Clearly. Uh, Mike Kenny feels, you know, uh, my nephew, he was at that game. And he said, Iowa has three of the best linebackers in the country. Yep. That's right. Yep. And he, he said, that in, the, in the whole nation, I said, really? And he said, I think so. I agree with you. Well, and one of their writers said the same thing. Is that right? The you know, right, East Lansing writers? East, one writer wrote, all we heard all week long in the last, how strong Michigan State's defense was. Uh -huh. yep. And they were. And we met our match. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. he, well, he said that's why it went back and forth. Hey, that was the best defense that Iowa has faced this year. Yeah, I know. That's Wayne right. And that's right. Mm -hmm. They stuffed Mark Weissman time after time. Until in the, the first end. half. Yeah, until the end. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, have you ever seen a beautiful touchdown like he made with that five yard? Yeah, that was a oh, honey. He went right through like an airplane. Oh, yeah. Well, on the <laughs> run previous you to You know that. who was leading that was Ferentz. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. It. that was in the paper there, too. Actually, the paper over there gave us more credit than the papers around here do. Well. They really, they, they didn't know what hit them. They did not. No. <laughs> and they were telling us before the game, this one guy was telling me, well, I'm glad uh, Central Michigan beat you because we handle them. He's <laughs> almost telling me how easy they're going to handle them. Well, uh -huh. think about it. Central Michigan <laughs> lost to Michigan State. Was it 49 to nothing? No. They scored. It was 51 to 13, I think. Oh, okay. 51 13. Yeah. Iowa lost to Central Michigan, 32 to 31. Yep. Yeah, that's right. But one thing we've learned over the years, guys, does not do any good to compare scores. Nope. No, that's there are too right. many examples of. Huh? Right. Yeah. What do you mean? You know, I mean, we but early in the yeah. season. At, uh, it's right. Later, later we go on. Uh, it's here for the Hawks. I mean, it really is here for them because they get better and better and better. Right. Well, what do you guys think yeah. about this? Now, that Central Michigan game was so depressing for fans. I think they'll. And I feel that it really turned the season around for the Hawkeyes. I agree. I think it woke them up. I mean, look at how they came out against Minnesota mm -hmm. and the the next Saturday. The officiating was, wasn't right. Oh, that, yeah. That it was, was terrible. Yeah. Ever seen. It was a joke. But another That's thing. right. That Central uh, Michigan uh, game officiating right. was a joke. Was a joke. Right. And the way I feel about a lot of it, we have a bunch of young kids out there. We got two brand new coaches, and it just takes a while. <laughs> and we're learning the system. Yep. The system's starting to go into place. Yeah. And we have practice. Uh, we had spring practice, and we had fall practice. So I, I don't think that has much uh, credence to it. I I, well, I, I feel that uh, we're we're starting to gel. Yeah. 
and that's what you are saying. Yeah, so. yeah. We, I think we have a defense, and it's, you look at the Central Michigan, you do shake your head, but you, we played pretty darn good defense in the, mm-hmm. the other five ball games. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and and they are getting better. And, and this Morgan is is a good, good oh. coach. He talked about him too. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 now, how sure many is. guys are re rotating in the defensive line? They're doing such about a four, good four. job. Four four. Four <laughs> four. Eight, 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 eight total. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That makes about yeah. I, I don't really pay attention to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know that's those guys are getting great experience for next year because I think there's only two seniors in that there rotation. You go. I, well, the one we can't, we can't talk about next year. <laughs> no. What as far as defense, I'm going to talk about Anthony Hitchens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He the, he's a junior <clears throat> from Ohio, and he had 15 tackles at Michigan State. Mm-hmm. And was named the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, the second time. For the second, well. Yeah, he had 14 in the. Uh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, he had 14 in the Northern Iowa game. He was all over the place. And he continues to be. In fact, mm-hmm. he's leading the nation mm-hmm. in tackles per game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Didn't realize that. But yeah. He, yeah, All more, the linebackers are it's playing about, well. They're, they really are. It's about 12 or 13, isn't it? He's averaging exactly 13 per game. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the other guy is the, kid, the field goal kicker. Well, Mike we're going to talk about him. <laughs> right. yeah. Another junior, Meyer, yeah. place kicker, Mike Meyer. Right. <clears throat> Dubuque Waller, right. mind you. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, was, he had four field goals, four for four, again, under and pressure. Under well, huh. the one that blew me away was the overtime field goal. Yeah, <laughs> forty-two yards. Yeah. How, what was the rain and wind like in that second overtime? On and off. When when he kicked it, when he kicked it, it was off. No rain. No rain. But when we got our touchdown, it was really raining. Oh yeah. And that we scored with fifty-five seconds left. Wiseman scored. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it, it's just in great. regulation. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, yeah. Mike Meyer is the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week for the second time this yeah. year. Okay. Uh, now, Bud, you were at the game at East Lansing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell us about your experience. Well, <clears throat> where were seats? Seats were good. Where were you oh. sit, sitting? Well, about the ten at Iowa. Mm-hmm. Probably a 10 yard line. Mm-hmm. On the Iowa side of the field? Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, they have three decks in there. Mm-hmm. We're on the top deck. Oh, you were? Oh, oh you yeah. were. Oh, boy. And it took forever to walk up. <laughs> <laughs> right. You However, probably needed oxygen. But, <laughs> yeah, but when you got up there, it was about like being in the press box. Because these seats went right across to the press box. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the seats, once you got there, but to go to the bathroom or anything, you didn't dare walk clear on down around. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, okay. It, it, but it was good. Who'd you go to the game with? Nay. Who? Nay knew. The guy that I tell Gates, you know okay. Nay. Okay, yeah. However, when we got there, we went. Uh, Nay always goes to, over to Iowa at 5 30 in the morning. So we get there at 5 30 <laughs> in this special lot. There was no one around or anything, so we just pulled in there and we parked right next to the stadium. Nobody there. No one there. Wait a second. You got to East Lansing at 5.30 a.m.? Yeah. Wow. Well, the game was 11. I know. <laughs> but anyway, so he puts his tent up and everything, and the people around 7.30, 8 o'clock, they don't tailgate the way we do. Yeah. Comes along, and this lady just comes over and starts ripping on me. How much money did you get for this? This is for the high givers in here and so forth. So Did you tell her a couple million? Whatever I had in my pants I said, pocket? All I can tell you is my grandfather graduated from here and I don't know what he left. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, we got a pass to get in there. Good thinking, bud. <laughs> so the way she went. <laughs> Little white line there. <laughs> I didn't know your grandfather went to Michigan State. <laughs> yeah. But the two people. There wasn't even a Michigan State back when his grandfather <laughs> no, went. Right. No, it was Michigan College. Right. Yes, I know. Right. I told it because they read it in the program. <laughs> <laughs> you had a little time to kill. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, yeah. But anyway, the two kids that were next to us were diehard Michigan State fans, and they 
just treat us the same thing. Of course, you know, Nate, he fed him yeah. pork and steaks and <laughs> everything. Yeah. Else. So we really had a good time with them. But they told me that they weren't concerned about Iowa. None of them were. They were looking ahead to Michigan. They were going to whoop they us. Play. Yeah, they play them this week, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. And he says, if two teams, if you get beat by, you're out of here, and that's Notre Dame and Michigan in the same season. <laughs> well, they've been beaten by Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, well, put Iowa in the middle of that. And they've it? been beaten by Iowa. <laughs> yeah. And who else beat them? Their uh, what's their record? Notre hmm. Dame and Iowa beat them, and somebody else. You're right. Um, Ohio State. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. Well, First Big Ten game, they well, beat so them seventeen to six. They were picked to win that division. Oh yeah. Well, right now they're one and three. 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 No. One and two. One, one and two. two. Yeah. And they're about to be one and three. Three. Right. Yeah. Um. So they, they play at Ann Arbor, right? This I believe it is. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, definitely. Now the Iowa game at East Lansing was homecoming. For That's the Spartans. Right. Beautiful parade. About five times as big as ours. Really? Probably 25, 30,000 people downtown. Really? Going to be downtown wow. Because it's all blocked off. What, what time was the parade? The parade was about the same time ours, 6 o'clock. Okay. So you were there Friday night? Yeah, we got there yeah. Friday afternoon. Okay. And uh, there wasn't, I did not run into one person that thought we were going to win. I didn't I mean, think we, we were. Talk. We have to get on. We have to get started to get that championship. We can't lose another game and all this. Because <laughs> so. so, that writer said the forum picked uh, Michigan State to beat Iowa. And the press citizen <laughs> did too. Yeah. Well, you know did. what? We, we've we handled Michigan State pretty good for a long time. We, we've handled <laughs> Michigan's pretty well. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we kind of handled Michigan your, State like Northwestern's been handling us. All right. I mean, they have a tough time beating us. Yeah, well, it's, uh, Northwestern is 6-5, and five, Northwestern, right now. Okay. In the well, last 11? Uh, since uh, under, Kirk's, under Kirk's. Oh, okay. 6-5. Yeah. Okay. and five. Okay. See, I, th I, th I thought, as I watched that game, they thought they could take care of Heisman, and they did pretty good. Weisman. Weisman. Heisman. Yep. Well, they, Heisman. well, that's what they say. <laughs> they did the first half. Well, yeah. well Heisman for Heisman. Uh, <laughs> but anyway... You. They really, really zeroed in on the quarterback. Half yeah. those passes were not his fault when they were off target. Mm -hmm. They either hit his arm or they, they were really after him. And I do think he's going to come back and help us the rest of the season. Vandenberg, he, he, needs, okay. he needs to bud. Yeah, I mean he's that's right. Played we, pretty, if he, he comes on strong, he, he so made up for all yeah. those uh, yeah, beautiful pass to Davis. Yeah, yeah, that's a right. Thirty-eight yarder, whatever. Yeah, yeah. that's well, right. Let's that's absolutely let's right. talk about James Vandenberg a little bit. I've got some statistics okay, that are good. just going to shock you because they shocked me. All right. And uh, I, I guess I'd just like to say first that James Vandenberg continues to confound me because he's a fifth-year senior. Amen. This is his third year as a starter and I think he has I think the passing game has regressed I thought that I didn't have any numbers to back it up and then I read a story yesterday in the Gazette by Mike Halas who's a pretty daggone good writer yeah uh, I by the way this is his second year as a starter though well, right. he, he started played, his sophomore year when uh, Stanzi got hurt. hurt. Three games. Yeah, but this is really he, he played sick. a beautiful game against Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, that was oh, his first. He did everything but win that game. Oh, mm -hmm. that's when he was a redshirt freshman. Took him to overtime. Didn't yeah, he? yeah. Well, let me just okay. read you some numbers on the Iowa passing game. To this point in the season, the Hawkeyes are four and two, and two and zero oh in the conference. So we played six games, and. This is how Mike Halas put it in his article. First and foremost, he said, the statistic that matters most in college football is wins and losses. Everything else is giggles and snorts. <laughs> Iowa is 2-0 in the Big Ten. That's as good as it gets after two games. James Vandenberg and Cavante Martin Manley, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, which makes the following statistics more like peccadillos instead of cardinal sins, but they're still... Very surprising after a half season with a fifth-year senior quarterback in James Vandenberg. In passing efficiency, 
the Hawkeyes are 114th out of 120 teams. They're, Iowa is tied with Army for 118th in passing touchdowns with, do you know how many passing touchdowns we have? Three. Two. Okay. Two. We are tied for 118th. Uh, he's made most of the touchdowns. That's yeah. right. So 118th in passing out of 120 teams. Army has thrown 61 passes compared to Iowa's 195, and they both have two touchdown passes. So we've thrown more than three times the amount of passes that Army has thrown and have the identical number of touchdown passes. Yeah. New Mexico is last with one touchdown pass. They have thrown 84 passes. New Mexico, like Iowa, has a winning record. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Iowa is dead last in the percent of its touchdown passes that are t – of its passes, excuse me. Iowa is last, dead last, in the percent of its passes that are touchdowns. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I mean, we just heard the numbers here. Yeah. Um, Iowa is 115th out of 120 teams in yards per pass attempt – we average 5.8 yards per passing attempt. I didn't even know they kept a record on that. There are statistics on no, passing that. attempts. Last season, Iowa was 46th in passing efficiency. This year, 114th. Now, the season's not over. No. Right. Um, again, it has completed 6.1% of its passes for touchdowns and averaged 7.4 yards uh, per attempt. That's last year, last year. 6.1% mm -hmm. of its passes were touchdowns. This year, 1%, 1.03. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. <clears throat> yes, the Hawkeyes, I'm sorry, yet the Hawkeyes have more passing yards per game, 189 passing yards per game, than four other Big Ten teams, including Ohio State, Michigan, and Northwestern. Now, that shocks me. It doesn't shock me. That's the way we're playing now. We get the ball down there, we turn it into a running game. But it's saying we have more passing yards per game than Ohio State, Michigan, That's and Northwestern. That's right, but we had to get those passing yards to get down there yep. to get the touchdown. Yep. And for glass half-fullers, Iowa is tied for 22nd in fewest interceptions thrown, mm -hmm. there you go. with only three. Mm -hmm. Michigan's Denard Robinson has eight <laughs> interceptions already. <laughs> Iowa has allowed just one quarterback sack in its last five games. They had six in their first game. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, oh, yeah. They straightened that up. <laughs> the Hawkeyes are 19th nationally in total defense. Pretty There's good. your 4-2 and two and 2-0 two and oh record. Mm -hmm. Which – you take us back to any of our really good teams, and our defense was always good those years. Yep. We're, we're from Michigan. We're seeing that this we're, year. We're, we're from Michigan State, aren't we? Oh, I am. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, because Michigan Michigan's State in our, to be Michigan, that's in our right. division. And knock uh, uh, Denard Robinson out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, he uh, might trip on I'd a almost, shoelace yeah, or not, something. He'll go out. You know what, hurt. Murph? I'd almost rather – Play Denard Robinson? Yeah. He's never beat us. Yeah. No. I, I, I got some figures here. Oh, yeah? Let's okay. hear them. <clears throat> okay. We've uh, tied uh, one team, Wisconsin. We're 6-6 six six against them. Oh, records between the, the two schools since Kirk Ferentz was right. head coach. Oh, okay. that's this, just, okay. All right. Uh, Michigan State has beat us five times. We have beat them seven. Okay. So five and seven with Michigan State. All right. Seven and five. Seven and five. Seven, seven, and seven and five. Iowa. Seven for Iowa. Five for Michigan State. State. Uh, Iowa plays Michigan, and they they're, they're ahead five. Uh, Kirk's ahead there, five to four. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, Minnesota, Iowa is nine and five, counting okay. you know, counting the victory this year. Uh, Purdue is six Iowa, three Purdue. Penn State 
This is a real surprise. Yeah. It's eight Iowa, three Penn State. <laughs> That's a real. Yeah. Uh, Indiana, seven Iowa, four Indiana. Illinois, Iowa, five, Illinois, three. Here's, they've beaten every every school except uh, the, the tie doesn't count except these three: Northwestern six, Iowa five. Mm -hmm. Ohio is seven, Iowa one. Mm. Nebraska three, Iowa nothing. But in, in, in uh, we've beaten seven teams. Uh, and that's pretty darn good. Out of 10. That is good, mm -hmm. yeah. Or no, out of 11. Seven out of 11. Seven yeah. out of 11. Mm -hmm. Tied with Wisconsin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And behind with Nebraska, Northwestern, and Ohio State. Yeah. Actually, eight out of 11, you've had winning records against, right? Iowa's the ninth, and there's three that we have losing records against. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. Wisconsin were tied. Oh, tied with yeah. Wisconsin. Six and yeah. six. Okay, yeah. So. All right. And I, I say that after we beat Northwestern this year, we'll be tied for them, right? Yeah. That's right. I, I think that uh, uh, we don't have to uh, take a back seat to anybody in the Big Ten you, no. with a record like that. Uh, the, uh, the Nebraska shouldn't count that. There was three losses. But uh, Well, under. We, when else see, did we play them besides last year? We played. When we Kirk played early there. over there when Kirk was here. Yeah, yeah that's first, right. right. First game. So I think. in his in his tenure, we're zero two. Okay. Is that right, guys? Played no, I think no, zero and three. I think we played him three times. Oh, we have okay. when he first came. Did we play him the first two years? We went over yeah. there. I think it was the same year that we played right. uh, Miami, mm -hmm. <laughs> the opening game here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was Hayden yeah. Friday. That was Hayden. Mm -hmm. That was Hayden. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, who did we play over here first? That was 20 years ago, this that, that, year. That, I don't know. Well, anyway, Northern Illinois, we're holding our own pretty well with the Yeah, we are. We're in our I didn't know that. I wouldn't no. have guessed that. No. We, we've been That's all. interesting information, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, we, we, we don't have a gripe uh, against uh, Kirk Ferentz. Nope. I, oh, and speaking of Kirk Ferentz, Ferentz, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, this was his 100th victory at Iowa. Mm -hmm. Yes. Big deal. He's, That's a big deal. He's uh -huh. 100 wins and 68 losses as an Iowa coach. And when he was coach at Maine, he won 12 and lost 23. And I like I like his, his record here better. There. Yeah. So he's 168. You know what else I like about Kirk? What? His wife, Mary. True. I know you're watching tonight, Mary. <laughs> and I just want to congratulate you on behalf of all the folks on Sports Opinion. Gradu congratulate you and Kirk on the arrival of your very first grandchild. How about that? Grandma and Grandpa now. Yeah. 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 They had a granddaughter, uh, see, a week ago yesterday, uh, which is good timing because Brian didn't have to miss a whole lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Didn't have to. TV station. That's great. Right. One of the TV stations congratulated yeah. both of them. Mm -hmm. Dad and Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah. But getting back to the her name is Presley. Never heard of somebody named Presley before. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty name. Different. Different. Hey, uh, getting back to Vandenberg. Mm-hmm. Now mm -hmm. he's had a tough season so far, but mm -hmm. we're four and two. And don't you just feel he's going to have a breakout game? We know he's got the ability to open it up, but. Uh, you know, don't you think I wish it's going to happen here pretty I soon? I wish we'd have stats on how many times he set us up for touchdowns. Well, the runs. That's what comes. Well, know, that's, that's what he does. If it wasn't for his pass. That's why you do audibles. If it wasn't for his yeah. pass Saturday, we wouldn't have won the ball. That game. pass to Keenan Davis. Now we have to give him some credit somewhere. Oh. Well, I think everybody does. I mean, that. Oh, I agree. That yeah. pass to Keenan Davis late in the game. I think was, right. was it second down or third down? Third. Third and long. After second, a big penalty. Second down, 26 yards. Yeah, there you go. So I thought it was second, second down. Second, 26. And things just weren't oh. looking good. And that play changed everything. All of a sudden, Michigan State thought, uh-oh. And all of a sudden, the Iowa team has momentum. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't stop us from then. Well, another interesting call on that drive, I thought, was when we got down to around, the, what, the 40, and I think it was third and six. And Wiseman... 
Mm-hmm. 35-yard run. Yeah, 37, five. 37 yards. Everybody's waiting for the pass, you know. I was, too, and it was and, just like the Northern Illinois game late. Yeah, right. Where yeah, third and long. 37 yards. Yeah. Third and seven, okay, there you go. And <laughs> third and long, and I thought, he's got to pass. Everybody well, that, thought he had to pass. So and then, they, boom, apparently. Yeah. here comes Mark Weissman. Doing the same thing he did to Northern Illinois. And he broke three tackles. Just oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. But what Buddy said, you know, I mean, he passed to get us the first down pre- previously, but that's what he does at the line of scrimmage. He saw something that yeah, probably changed into right. a run. Probably audible out of a pass, passing yeah. play, perhaps, you know. Yeah. But that's what a smart quarterback does. We know he's smart. Mm-hmm. That's right. But Someone we, mentioned it here already. Yeah, we I'll just, never forget the Ohio State game. Yeah, I'll I did. never forget that. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, we're all happy to be four and two right we, now. Aren't yeah, we? But, but we took them to overtime, didn't we? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Took them to overtime. Uh, that was a game where um, we had the big kickoff return for a touchdown at yes. Columbus. DJK. DJK. Yeah. Right. And this was. You I mean, know, his a, first road game yeah. as a starter. And it wasn't easy. We he had that well. it was called back against Michigan State. Yep. Now, and yeah, I want to talk about that. Uh, uh, Cotton. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it, uh, what the heck's his first name? Jordan. Jordan Cotton. Uh, Jordan. His dad was Marshall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jordan Cotton is kind of the surprise of the mm-hmm. offense right now. Yeah. He is clearly one of the top three receivers mm-hmm. on the team. Yeah. And we saw what he could do mm-hmm. on special teams with that kick return. And the penalty, which called the play back, really had no impact on the yeah. play itself. He no, didn't no. open anybody no. up. It was one of our uh, – who was it that had the penalty? Hamilton, the tight yeah, end. Yeah, Hamilton, the tight end, pushes the kicker in the yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Just dumb. Just he another dumb play. He didn't oh, have no. to. <laughs> How yeah. close was he to Cotton when he did that? Far. Far away, okay. yeah. Far. Yeah. And well, Cotton was ahead. You know, that's instinct, guys, when you're on a football yeah. field. You're not always thinking. Yeah. You're, it's, you react instinctively. Well, James Cotton – I'm sorry, James Cotton. Jordan Cotton is going to be, I think, a star before his career is over. Um, he's made some big catches. That's yeah. right. Think how many games this year we said, who was that? They mm-hmm. just caught that pass. Mm-hmm. You know, you knew it wasn't Kevante Martin Manley. Who was it who dropped those passes in the first game? In the first game? Yeah. Pretty much everybody. Yeah. I don't think he was out there then. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, In fact, those drops are mm-hmm. what gave him an opportunity That's right. to demonstrate what he can do in the heat of battle. And he, yeah. among all others, I think has really stepped up his game. I think the receivers should be in that uh, – there should be a, a figure that how many they, they've dropped because mm-hmm. it, it really affects yeah, Vandenberg's. Right. I'd say that's well, right. since we had that one bad game, they've really improved on their catching abilities, you know, I think. Mm-hmm. But what are we going to start? I mean, I, I really thought we'd be using our tight end more, I guess. I'll tell you what, uh, our big guy, he ain't getting the job done blocking-wise. He nearly got Vandenberg killed in the first half. Fedorowicz? Fedorowicz. Fedorowicz. And I don't know that he played the second half. If he did, it was sparingly. Hamilton uh, okay. is who was in there in the second half, yeah. along with uh, – To me, Hamilton. Doozy. Doozy. Mm-hmm. Doozy's the other uh, one. Yes. And he is a doozy. Right. He had a big catch late in the game. Yes, he did. That's uh, right. And you just didn't see Fedorowicz. And there's a reason. Because he ain't blocking. He just can't do it, uh, at least not well enough to stay in the game. Yeah, well, he'll block this Saturday. Well, yeah, he's a junior. <laughs> he needs to. Yeah. He needs to step it up. And I think there's, I think our wide receivers, not just our tight ends, but I think the wide receivers really need to step it up mm-hmm. too. I don't think they're running the routes okay. to get open. Okay. Now, that's another thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're there's fast enough Many either. a times that ball was thrown – and they didn't run the right yeah, run. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's part of the statistics. <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah. That's, that's, if you don't run That's that not on the quarterback. No, that's right. You remember when Marv Cook spoke to us at lunch a couple of weeks ago and talked about the pass play that his high school team at Regina calls, that he knows the Hawkeyes call, that he learned from Bill Belichick playing for the, Boston, or for the New England Patriots. Yeah. And he talked about 
the signal that the quarterback and the wide receiver have just before the ball is snapped, where essentially the quarterback, I'm sorry, the wide receiver stops just short of oh. where he's expected to go uh, on a fly pattern, and the ball is underthrown on purpose. And I saw that play late that in the play, game. That play was that was a good Vandenberg one too. underthrew it. Where he, you could just tell it's where he was supposed to throw yeah. it, and the wide receiver. I don't remember back. who it was. He come back. He yeah. Well, he didn't come back soon enough. Yeah. Uh, but he he starts to. He didn't do it right. Right. He, he didn't do, do it, it right. It was. You know, it, it's no secret that the Hawkeye wide receivers lack team speed. Jordan Cotton is the exception to that. Mm-hmm. He is the fastest guy on the team. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. know that. No. Didn't yep. know that. Fastest guy on the team. He showed it with that kick return. He showed it with another big pass play. Um, <laughs> well, let's talk about that a little bit. Maybe, you know, he hasn't played prior to this year really hardly at all. Not at all. So, one of the things that our new offensive coordinator said when he came here is lack of speed. Yep. And we, you know, basically need to recruit more speed. Well, maybe that's why Cotton is getting the opportunity. That's right. I think it is. And the fact that he can run the routes. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I'm saying that let's not be too hard on Vanderbilt. Right. No, yeah. Well, and that's what we're all saying. <laughs> I, I'm I'm as frustrated as anybody with the, you know, the three yard passes on third and eight. Okay. That now, drives me nuts. I don't know whose fault that is. I agree with that one. Yeah, yeah I agree with that one. I don't know. He's why. the one pulling the trigger. He's the one pulling the trigger. But is he pulling the trigger on well, these short routes? Why don't that guy go two more yards? But he's not supposed to. He's not supposed to. The other receivers are. They're the ones downfield that aren't getting open. I mean, that's what it boils down to. And he has no choice but to go to the Michigan, short route, man. Michigan State picked up at least first five first downs because they'd just get over the line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they go like this, uh, Penn State game, maybe this will be the breakout game because he's going to have one. He's oh, due. I'm sure he will. Yeah, he's, he's due. He, he's going to have one. He's sure. And will. Penn State's due for a <clears> loss. <throat> How many have they won in a row? A, they have the same record as Iowa, 4-2, 2-0. Two, four two two and and he made a good comment that he's doing what he's told. Who's that? Vandenberg. Oh, Vandenberg? Yeah. Yeah. I, he better. Yeah. You know, we're winning. <laughs> you know, like I say, when we need to get a touchdown way down there, he gets it down there. Who tells in the game if Vandenberg get hurt? What? If Vandenberg gets oh, hurt. Oh, who comes in the game? I good don't question. have a name, but I think he's from Florida. His name is Jake. not... Not Reddick. No. He's not number two. It's a kid named but Bethard. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> if he gets hurt. Bethard is number two? Yeah. A kid from I Florida. I know that. If he gets hurt, the kid from Florida. Isn't he okay, from man, let me tell Georgia? You. Or where is he from? He may not th- be two. I don't know. Uh, two I think he's before. from, I want to say California. His He is the grandson of Bobby Bethard, the longtime San Diego Chargers general manager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And from what I'm told, he's number two. He's the first guy in. That Reddick just hasn't picked up all the, the the finer points of being a Big Ten quarterback, and he's mm. still too skinny. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think so. I think he is. Is he a true freshman? No, he's a sophomore. Redshirt freshman. Redshirt freshman. Redshirt okay. freshman. Now Reddick's not there. Interesting. Didn't he's not that. there. I mean, you wait and see. Well, I hope. Well, hopefully, I hope we don't see. We hope we don't have to. You know, yeah. hope Vandenberg just gets the job done and stays Oh, I think he will. Yeah. I, you know, I'm one guy that's not disappointed in him. Uh, Outside of that, that uh, when we got two yards to go, <laughs> the guy we throw to is just five yards to, to pick up. Well, I'm disappointed in some of his decisions. <laughs> how, about, how about the offensive line? They've just oh, done boy. great, especially that left side. Yes. They're just blowing people out. They've done a very good job. Yeah. 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 Now what I want to ask you all about. When Rochelle ran out in the field to grab his Who now? Who? Danny Rochelle's boy. Ran He's out. the offensive coordinator for Michigan oh, State. Oh, okay. Ran out and grabbed the player and jerked him off the field. Didn't see that. Oh, it should have been a flag. Mm-hmm. He jerked his own player off the field? They had too many men on the field. Uh-huh. Oh, that, that was when they were at the end of the half. That one yeah, was at the end of the half. Oh, when they were scrambling, trying to get their field goal That's team right. out That's right. So if the coach goes out on the field, 
grabs the guy in the center of the field. It wasn't like on the side. It was a center, and he drags him off. I miss Excuse that. Me. That's a flag. Oh, it should. Where, where was the oh, flag? Oh, Kurt was just so upset going yeah. off the field. I thought it was pretty funny how they failed to get their field. Yeah. They get the line up there, the clock's ticking, no time left, no, no time left. quarterback? No quarterback. <laughs> Everybody's looking around, and the clock just goes out. And I, you know D'Antonio was upset. Well, for those people that don't know who Dan Rochard Jr. is, the offensive coordinator for Michigan State, is from Clinton, Iowa. We talked right. about him last yeah. week on yeah. the show. His dad coached uh, basketball Regina. Yeah. In the 60s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well his, and his uh, aunt would be Peg Cahill. That's mm -hmm. correct. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be darned. I hope she was calling for the Hawks. What was her maiden name? Uh, mm, don't know. Okay. From Hampton, Iowa. I know that. You uh, know the anyway. answer to Peg. Uh, <laughs> Big Cahill's maiden name. Please call Bud. Call Bud. Call, call Bud Supel after midnight. On his home phone. I got a call. Give me your phone number. I got a call. Did you get a phone call? Yes. <laughs> the time I got up to answer it, the young man. <laughs> what phone number did they call? Three three eight five eight. Oh, 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 oh. oh my oh, gosh, Addy. so close. <laughs> Good try, Dirk. You know. I really enjoy doing this show with you. It's a lot of fun. Um, before we talk about the Penn State game, real briefly, I want to talk about Bill Jouse, who was a member of the Sports Writers on TV cable TV show back in the let's see the eighties. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of us. Well, wasn't he a, a, a writer for a paper? Yes. I don't know who he wrote for. Yeah, the Tribune. Tribune. Yeah, was he the Tribune writer? And then you had Gleason, Bill Gleason. Yeah, that's like yeah. Gleason. He was that. for the Sun, or the South Bend oh, Times, okay. yeah, that's or whatever right. that paper yeah, that's is. Right. And then you had Bentley, Ben Bentley, Ben Bentley, yeah. who wrote for the Chicago Sun Times. Who was the moderator? Yeah. Well, I guess you could say Rick Tallender was. No, no, no Bentley. Was, Bentley. I, I, thought, I thought it was Gleason. Yeah. Or maybe it was Gleason. No, I don't think so. I think okay. it was Bentley. Bentley. Bentley was the crusty guy who who covered boxing. I'm they were all pretty crusty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Joust was the heavy set guy. Yeah. And he was the Cub fan. And uh, <laughs> he just died last week. So that leaves just Rick Tellender, who then was a writer for Sports Illustrated. I don't know who he writes for now. Uh, he's still around. But he's the only one left alive who started that show. And you know, guys? I think he's a freelance writer. Is he? Yeah. yeah. He's written a couple books, you know, on that. Well, he's well. a very good writer. Yeah. And uh, that show was kind of a precursor. Mm -hmm. It was, that show was before ESPN. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. That show was before all the pardon the interruptions and all the other talk shows. It was before sports opinion. And I think sports writers on TV, I asked Earl before the show, I said, did you think about sports writers on TV when you formed this show? And he said no. Uh, a guy by the name of Hess. Uh-huh. John Hess. John Hess. Yeah, Is he a his professor? Dad used, used to be a, uh, was a quarterback for Iowa in the 50s, uh, his third team quarterback. Yeah. And he gave you the idea to do this show. John Hess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, essentially, but it's a very similar format, wouldn't you agree, Murph? Four yeah. guys sitting around talking sports. They yeah. had a big, like, round oak table, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they'd sit there smoking cigars. Smoking cigars. Oh, yeah. Stuff would come out. Should we get some cigars, Murph, you think? Yeah. I, mean, well, I don't think Jamal would approve. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal, can oh, we bring yeah. cigars in here and smoke? <laughs> That's right. Oh, he says thumbs up. So. Thumbs up, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I watched that show religiously, and I'd oh, watch I it a second too. and a third too. time. Did it come on Sundays? Well, they were entertaining. It was on all the time, it seemed like. Yeah, I think it was about like ours. It wasn't on WGN. You could get it maybe no. Sunday and then again Thursday. It, it, was, um, it was on one of those shable, uh, cable, <laughs> Chicago cable networks that I think is now called Comcast. Like 44 or 43 yeah. on Mediacom, that one. Yeah, it yeah. came out of Chicago. Yeah. But it, if you but like it, football, if you like football and lived in the Midwest, yeah. you watch that show every week. It was fun. And I yeah. learned that that show was popular all across the nation. Oh, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if at some point they didn't switch over to WGN or what, how these other 
markets picked it up. But when Joust died, I read how impactful that show was all across the nation. Again. Well, probably WGN because at one time WGN, every cable company yeah. had it. Still does. Yeah. You can find WGN out in Chicago. It's a super station. Yeah. Well, now, when did Bill Joust pass away? Just this a week? A week ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that show predates all the sports talk shows on TV today, including <laughs> ours. We've been doing this for about 25 years, give or take. We don't even know for sure. Uh, but <laughs> One of the first cable access TV shows, <laughs> right, Mark? Sure. Oh, yeah. It's the in longest Iowa running. City. Yeah, this is the longest running cable yeah. access TV show in Iowa City, and we're really proud of that. Let's That's say a long 30 time. years. <laughs> Let's just say it, yeah. 30 years. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> but sports writers on TV was groundbreaking, and it was eye-opening. Mm -hmm. Until then, all we had was newspapers. There weren't radio talk shows like there are today. The Big Peach? Yeah. You had The Big Peach. You had Al Grady. Uh, you had, you know, Gus Schrader in the Gazette. And, what, what, what's WGN stand for? World's Greatest it's, Newspaper. Okay. World's Great. I Tribune. Think, yeah. At one time, they were owned by the Tribune. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, WLS stands for World's Largest Store because they were owned by Sears mm -hmm. at one time. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. I know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, WMT in Cedar Rapids stands for Minneapolis Tribune, mm -hmm. which owned them at the time. Um, KCRG cool. stands for Cedar Rapids Gazette, which still owns them. Um, there are a lot of little WOC in the Quad Cities is the wonder of chiropractic because Palmer, mm -hmm. the Palmer family. <laughs> so if we started with a W, we could be like, like WBS, right? <laughs> yeah, WBS. <laughs> KXIC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, who, who was it with him in business? Herb Olson. Herb yeah. Olson, yeah. So I just wanted to mention that Bill Jowes has passed, and that leaves Rick Tellender. Um, also, on, in, in passing, not death, but in passing, uh, and speaking of KCRG, John Campbell, mm -hmm. longtime sports director mm -hmm. who came to that station in 1979. I used to work with John for seven years, and I'm just, I want to tell all the viewers that they don't come any classier, mm -hmm. they don't come any more down to earth than John Campbell. Now, he's a friend of Sports Opinion. We've had him on the show, and mm -hmm. he was a wonderful guest. He is so humble. We need mm -hmm. to get him on again this winter. I think he'll have I've some never time. heard a person say anything bad about him. No. no. If they do, you let me know who they are. Nice. Serious. <laughs> uh, you well, said it very professionally. You know, I worked in TV, <clears throat> I worked in radio, and you get used to working with a lot of egos, especially mm -hmm. in TV, with the people in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. It just kind of goes with the territory. But John Campbell never forgot his roots from Oskaloosa, mm -hmm. Iowa. Yep. He's just a good guy. You know who's going to guy. miss him more than anyone? Young kids. Mm -hmm. Because the big old fish. Yeah, he's That's going to keep moment. doing that. Yeah, but I mean, he'll, what, once you leave, it's... It's different. Yeah. It's All never the same. All my kids, every one of them, sent a fish in at one time. Is that right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Well, they just thought it was neat. We can get on TV. You know that they have a six-month wait they have oh, so many entries yeah. for big old fish. Oh, it's really? You've got to wait six oh, months just to get your big old fish on there. Wow. But Didn't know that. Just think what he's done for all those kids how, out there. How many did they have a night? Oh, I have at least 20. At least 20. Yeah, he goes to them. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just a, just a great guy. Well, he's a hard worker, too, because he's not one of these prima donnas. Yeah, you see him with the camera. The carrying his own games, camera. Yeah. You don't yeah, see that yeah. with anybody else that are sports directors at a TV station. Well, getting back to, he's the one that got sat our Friday Night Lights. That's right. In the state of Iowa. Yep. <laughs> now everybody's doing a Friday yeah. Night high but school football. he's still program. there with his camera. You betcha. He's yeah. still there. Okay. Freddie, what's his Reg nickname? Freddie. Uh, Regina had uh, won eight games. And the eighth game, they didn't get. He had a hard time finding the score. Oh, that was they're out of town, way down there in Cardinal, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, no. Wa oh, last week, Wapolo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Murphy, you'll remember this. I can remember back years ago when Wapolo 
And you high with a number one, two team in that conference. Mm -hmm. yeah, really? Remember the mm -hmm. Eastern? Well, you are old, buddy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> don't you remember that? I think no. They, they closed you <laughs> I don't remember yeah. that. <laughs> I think in the 60s. Though. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of high school, West High, 8 no. Wow. Did you catch yeah. the score of their homecoming game? 71 to 14. <laughs> I. Well, and they're ranked number two in the state behind Ankeny. Yeah. And that would Good. I want them to be yeah, ranked well, behind that's right. That's right. Well, well, remember last year. They're going to be tough to beat. Last yeah. year, Regina was not number one all year long. Mm -hmm. yeah, East Marshall right. was, and they got beat the first game of the playoffs. That's right. So, I mean, this, this, this ranking, you know, anyone that votes in uh, Western Iowa don't know their football. <laughs> Because the automatic vote, they don't know what a West High is. Understandable. You know, it's a big, wide state, yep. and it's high school, not yeah, college. For Sioux City has. Yeah, and they got good well, some of them do. The Des Moines I mean, area always has good they don't like, teams. Well, they don't like Iowa City yeah. having three teams in the top five or six all the time. That's too bad for well, them. We play better football in the southeast corner of the state than anywhere That's else right. in the state. Mm -hmm. I mean, was just a little jealous of that. And look at West Branch. So, I mean, you could just go yeah. on and name all the right around Iowa well, City. Right. Solon is predominantly. Yeah. Solon's good. Lone Tree. Right yeah, here in Johnson County. Yeah, they're coming. Lone yeah. Tree's got a good Mid -Prairie. program. Mid -Prairie. Yeah, they yeah, well, they're six well, six I'll league. tell you one thing. They got a ball player, as far as I'm concerned, is the best, one of the best ball players yeah. on Iowa. Yeah. Miller. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. He Tanner played Miller. He yeah, played from, yeah, where he I was from last recruit three Prairie. years ago. Great story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, last one they signed. Well, Brian Souser, head coach at West High, has an interesting game coming up. This is the last week of the regular season. Mm -hmm. That's it. So West High is traveling to Waterloo East, which uh, they had a little bad blood last year after that game. They thought West High was running up the score on them at uh, the first game of the season, I believe. This year it's the last game of the season, <laughs> and and Waterloo East has maybe the best quarterback in the in the district. Yeah, a kid named Van Arsdale. I guess he's really something to watch be Norman, when he's healthy. Norman Granger's brother-in-law. Is that right? You know everything. The Van Arsdale is. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, he <laughs> married uh, Van Arsdale. Uh huh. And. and uh, he was a good wrestler for. Oh, he married Iowa that State. same one that wrestled at Iowa State. It, yeah, he was a daggone good wrestler. Mm -hmm. One of the okay. best ever. Mm -hmm. Mike yeah. Van Arsdale, mm -hmm. tough as nails. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Granger married a clone. Wow, that's scary. Yeah, no kidding. Sister of a clone. A clone wrestler, no well, less. She, I think the girl went to Iowa. Oh, she okay. Uh, she had we'll to, forgive her. Uh, then. Yeah, she had to be normal then. Uh, City High took another one on the chin. Dad got it. Oh boy! They lost three in a row. Uh, they got beat at Linmar. I uh, didn't see that coming. To tell you the truth, I no, didn't I think didn't Linmar either. was that good. I don't think they are. I think Iowa City or City High is that injured. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how badly that makes, they're injured. It makes a big difference. Well, when's the last time City High was four and four? Mm -hmm. You know that, and on the verge maybe of not having a winning season because they wrap up against what Kennedy. Kennedy. Now, that's They're a home game for a playoff spot. Yes, they still have great chances at a playoff. Oh yeah. Position. Um, yeah. It, it's a home game, probably last home game they'll have. Uh, all things considered. Um, so get out there, Kennedy. We're getting to that playoff. That's a that's a that's the key. Sham. Well, it is these days. You realize that Wapperlo. Kyoto, which we play Friday night, they're all in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> you may have a team that won two games and lost seven and be in the playoffs. The IHSA wants money. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Money, 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 See, money, I didn't money. realize that we have, I think, five games to win the playoffs now, so it's almost a half a season. Yeah. Think of that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, well you get, get to the final game, you're going to be in that fifth playoff game, yeah. 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 Right. Regina clinched its district championship last weekend. In the last weekend, they did it. Wow. <laughs> but it was official. They went to Wapolo and won 35 to nothing, and all 35 points were scored in the first half. All 35 points. Yeah. Um, they have a 36-game win streak going. 
Phenomenal. Phenomenal. They have s- potential for, what, six more games this season? This weekend? Yeah, if and they, they win it all, they'll be 42 straight. Yeah. yeah. They'll now, be get, three, guess what, three straight 14 seasons. Guess what happens seasons, if they do that? Doing. What? Yeah. They meet Solon at Solon. The opening ah. game, and we beat Solon when they had yep. 42 they had 40, games. Was it 42 Shoot. or 44? Yeah. No, I thought it was 42, but I maybe. think it was. Was yeah. it? Yeah. So that that's how they open the next year, you mean? That's how they open them. Well, we got to win these Solon. next. We got to win out. We got to win out this year first. That's yeah, a long that's way right. to go. Uh, the Regals will host Sigourney Kyoto. Used to be just Sigourney. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but they combine. And they used to be the Savages. Now they're the Savage Cobras. <laughs> that's the goofiest name. <laughs> Savage Cobras. <laughs> no wonder. They, okay. No wonder they can't get cheerleaders anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. You know, we haven't talked about Penn State yet. We've got about eight minutes to go, and I, I do have some info Who's on Penn State. Who's uh, West Plate? Kennedy, you said? West is – no, they're at Waterloo East. Yeah. City High hosts Kennedy. Cedar okay. Rapids Kennedy, and Regina hosts Sigourney Kyoto, right. the Savage Cobras. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they got a lot of – Penn State, 7 o'clock Saturday night on the Big Ten Network. Don't have to worry about which ESPN channel or whether we get it. It's the Big Ten Network. 7 o'clock, Saturday night. Uh, the series between the two teams overall is tied mm-hmm. at 12-12. and 12. That's right. Iowa has won three of the last four meetings and eight of the last ten. But Penn State won 13-3 last year. Mm-hmm. At... Uh, at Whatever they call that place, Happy Valley. Uh, Iowa holds a nine and three advantage since 1993 when Penn State joined the Big Ten. That's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Nine and three over a very dominant and prominent Penn State program, especially then in the days. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Hawkeyes have won four straight in Kinnick Stadium since Penn State won in 1999. So we've beaten them four straight times at home. And uh, let's see. But PSU holds a 7-5 advantage in Iowa City overall. Does that make sense to you? But Kirk has an 8-3 advantage since he's been coach. That is correct. Here and there. That is correct. Mm-hmm. 9-3. Oh, no, 8-3. Yeah. You're, wrong. You're right. Now, here's a little tidbit I'd forgotten <clears throat> about. Brian Ferentz, our new offensive line coach, mm-hmm. was on the New England Patriots staff with current Penn State head coach Bill O'Brien. Three years they were there together. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. They really like him over there. They And Bill O'Brien liked him enough to, well, supposedly Bill O'Brien wanted Brian Ferentz right. to join the Penn State staff. Uh, also, supposedly at the same time, Bill Belichick with the New England Patriots wanted to name Brian his offensive coordinator. Now think about that. Brian's pretty young. He's not even 30. Well, look what he's yeah. doing already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but he turned all him, that down. Yeah, but we got him. That's good news. He's here. Another thing on the stats this week, we beat who? Minnesota and Michigan State. Mm-hmm. And they both beat us last year. Oh. Ah. They both beat mm-hmm. us last year. Penn State beat us last. So we're going to get another one. Well, I'm for it. Hey, it all back. comes around. <laughs> Payback, baby. Yeah. I like that. We're I like get that. Uh, it's also one of those games where you, depending on what section you sit in, you wear either black or gold. So if you're going to the game, they'll have a listing somewhere online. <laughs> I haven't bothered to look at How it yet. How about wearing your bib overalls? <laughs> well, I think so that covers you. Know, you can, you that, can do that. sit yeah. anywhere with That'd black and gold bibs. I never gave that a thought. That's do you not... have a pair of black and gold bibs? No. No? I used to have them. My wife made me get rid of them. I got a shirt. I, we we sold a, a ton of them. Yeah. Oh, I'd I'd wear wear a that's where I got them. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course. I got a shirt that's black and gold, so it depends if I sit on this end or that end. Is that right? <laughs> I'm going to wear what's warm. I do, too. I'll have a coat on this. Uh, the, Mark, uh, what's Hayden Fry's slogan? Scratch where it itches. No, uh, America needs farmers. Oh yeah. yeah, it's also America needs farmers uh, yeah. day mm-hmm. at Kinnick. Oh, that's right. Yeah, ANF day. That's what the ANF on the helmet 
Are they forward. bringing Hayden back for that? Nope. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. So Penn State's won four straight. I heard Hayden was back in town recently. Well, yeah, somebody yeah, he ran into home, him. Homecoming. He no, gave me a, since homecoming. Oh, no, I, he gave me a call on homecoming. Yeah, did he? he? Ran, well, he ran into my driver. He wanted to know, is that old guy still working? <laughs> and Tom says, yeah. So he got the number and called me. <laughs> Surely not too good. You were going to ask but a question, Surely Bob. Surely not too good. Essence, well, yeah. homecoming was a Minnesota game, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah okay. So that was no, two I weeks. was going to uh, say that Penn State's just won four in a row. Mm-hmm. Same record we have. They're mm-hmm. four and two, and two and zero oh in the conference. Who beat Who beat Penn State? Temple. Uh, Temple and I can't Navy, remember. Army, Navy, Air Force. <laughs> uh, they lost their first two games. Right. I know that. Temple and somebody else. Okay. North Carolina State. Yeah, no, no, don't remember. Coast Guard, uh, <laughs> local high school team, uh, Central Michigan. <laughs> well, I don't give a darn. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it might have been an Eastern. It might have been a directional school. Four minutes. Yep. Eastern, maybe. I don't know. And don't uh, be calling me to find out. Who said, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> Who's going to call you? No one. I said. Oh. <laughs> well, we're going to beat them Saturday. That's the main. Mm-hmm. Looking yeah. forward to. It. How do you guys feel about night games? I don't like them. I don't yeah. like them. You like them? I can't see as well at night. Um. <laughs> he doesn't know if it's night or day. I don't like waiting around all day. I don't either. Well, I nuts. would. You know what? I I think we'd all. I'd prefer the old one o'clock game Boy, like it used to be that. and lock it in. But TV dictates everything. But yeah, you know it. But I don't. I'll tell you what. I don't like. I like any game that is not at eleven a.m. Yeah. I like the eleven. Then I can get home and watch all the other games. That's the only good thing about 11 a.m. Well, I guess starts. that is a plus, but I don't. Um, I don't like 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. There's too many drunks out. There are that, and it just takes too long. I mean, what do the players do all day? They got to sit around and wait. You, especially yeah. if you're a visiting team, you're stuck in the hotel. Did any of you see? Speaking of the night games, because they mentioned that they had a story on uh, uh, Wiseman. Oh. Oh, on the Big Ten Network? On the Big Ten. Saw it. That was a sad story. Yeah. He didn't even get a play at his sophomore year in, yeah. in high school. But he's a tough kid. He was skinny. Yeah. Tough that kid. She'll watch it. It'll be on probably several yeah. times. Was it wasn't very kid. long. It was like a seven, eight, ten minute yeah, piece. Yeah, right. But it was good. I mean, yeah. that's something that I like to watch where these kids are come how mm-hmm. they've been brought up and all that yeah, yeah. I mean I listen I watch that stuff like a hawk yeah. well, because they had somebody else on there they had uh, uh, they had two other yeah two other stories guys, yeah. Yeah. well when did Wiseman get his opportunity then is a junior in high school or a senior uh, his breakthrough was his senior year okay um, yeah he come out strong so well, guys, we're we're out of time. We are. Yeah, there are people waiting to get in here to the studio. Your sister's here to pick you up. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. I haven't seen her in a while. <laughs> Should we bring her on the set? And she's my sure. Yeah. I can't no. see her anymore. Oh, she can't. She wouldn't us. want to be on there. She's shy. <laughs> well, we're not shy, or else we wouldn't be in front of the camera every week on Sports Opinion every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Every Sunday night at 6 p.m. on Channel 18. That's cable access TV. Or you can tune in to patv.tv on your computer, mm-hmm. and they've got the show every week up there. Or you can go to my Facebook page and watch it every week, too. So uh, on behalf of my good friend Bob Boyd, my good friend Bud Supel, and my good friend Earl Murphy, I'm Dirk Keller saying mm-hmm. thanks for watching every week. Thanks to my mom for watching. I hope she gets to see this this time. And remember this, <laughs> either you're a hawk or you're not. Go Hawks, beat the Nittany Lions. Amen. Amen. I wonder if you'll be...